Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Oswald and welcome to the second part of our very basics of paint.net tutorial. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be looking at the colors and the color window specifically. So picking different colors we're going to talk about um, and that's pretty much it really. So we have different elements here. We have our first drop down box here. It says primary and secondary. We can pick either of those, primary secondary, either of those, primary, secondary, there's only two options, but the same thing can be done by either clicking on one of these two colors. So if I want to pick that primary color, that's the primary color here. Secondary color is the white that is here right now. Our primary color is the more important one for what we're talking about today, because it is the one essentially that we, we would be drawing with. So if I use my paintbrush, I would be drawing in black, which is my primary color here. So the next thing we have here that we'll notice, the big part here, is our color wheel. So I can actually take any point of that, select that point, and it gives me the color in my primary color that we want to use. So let's say if we wanted to use that color right there, we can draw it on right there as our primary color. If I wanted to use this shade of kind of a reddish, pinkish color, I can select that there. If I wanted to select this green, I can do so. Likewise, you can select colors from your palette down here. Each of these squares represents a different color. So if I wanted to take this cyan, draw with it, I can. And this blue and so on. Likewise, you'll notice on the bottom bar here, there's darker colors. So if I wanted to pick a navy blue, I can do that. A darker green, I can do that. If you're keen, you may have noticed that if you look on your color wheel here, you cannot pick this darker color. This color here cannot be found on this color wheel. No matter where you go in the green section over here or in any of the other sections, you cannot find this darker green. So what do we do about that? We can take here and look at this button that says more. We press that and it does give us more. So we have all these sliders here and we wonder what they do now. These first three ones here we're not going to look at, this fourth one we're not going to look at, and this very last one we're not going to look at for this tutorial. The two very important ones are these two here, and you'll see why in just a moment. So we'll look at this bottom one here that's labeled V of these two here. Now, if we drag this slider here over towards black, we're adding more and more black, you'll notice, to our primary color here. So more and more black, less and less black, and, you know, we can add as much as we want or as little as we want. The top one similarly either takes away white so we have no white whatsoever in that right now and if we drag it down this way we have more and more white. What we're doing with this slider here of course if you notice how this button here is going back and forth this little cursor it is essentially doing the same thing as dragging towards the middle of the circle so towards the middle of the circle more white towards the edge of the circle your color is more saturated. As well if we know that white and black mixed together of course make gray so we can make a greenish grayish kind of color by sliding this color down here or slider down here and doing that and now we have kind of a grayish kind of colored green up here that we just used so let's say for example that we really liked that color that we just selected this grayish kind of green and we wanted to keep it. We, at different times, may want to come back to that color to color various things. What we can do is we can look down at our palette here, all these different squares, and we can do Add Color Palette. We press that button there, and we will be dropping this color here, our primary color, somewhere on this palette while the outline of it here is flashing. So I want to drop it right there. There it is. If I want to select another color, similarly, I want to select that pink, for example add color to palette and I can put it right over there. Same thing if I want to do a light kind of blue, add color to palette, oops, add color to palette and there, oops, no, it didn't work either. Here we go, add color to palette and boom, right there, look at that. And now we can look up here and we have this nice color here that we've made. So let's say for example that we made that a darker kind of bluish purplish color and we colored it up here and then we picked another color and we say oh my goodness I really wanted to add that color to my palette. What do I do? How do I pick it again? Well, we can pick it again with what we call our color picker over here that looks like a little eyedropper that's right under our eraser. And we can come in here and we can actually come back to this color, press that color there, and we'll notice once again is it is our primary color. If we really want to add it to our palette, once again, add the color palette, and we can add it to our color palette like so. And we can do that for as many colors as we want, as many as there is squares down here for our color palette. 
so we can do that now since we've talked about picking colors with the color picker tool we can actually do something with actual images so let's look at some images here that we have let's say we're doing some cartoony kind of images in an anime style we could take something like this picture here of Ed from Cowboy Bebop and pick colors specifically that are on this character here so we want this nice orangey color of the hair we've picked that color it is our primary color we've picked it with the color picker tool pressed it here and we have that primary color now if we wanted once again we could add this color to palette and bring that down here and add it like that let's say for example flesh tones are something that a lot of people do have trouble um, making I guess from their color wheel and so on so if I want to actually take the flesh tone that is here I want a really nice authentic anime type flesh tone I can take that color pick it and if I want I can add it to my palette down here and you can continue with the other flesh tone that we have here this uh, this nice peachy almost kind of brownish um, color for the shade add it once again to our palette down here and we can add as many colors from any picture that we want and we're not just limited to cartoony pictures let's say for example we have this nice sunset here um, the city of Toronto we have these beautiful colors in the sky I want to pick this specific kind of pink color down here this nice salmon color I can do the same thing add colored palette and so on and I think you're getting the idea but of course we can also do this with photographs of people let's say if I wanted to for example touch up this little part here on David Suzuki's face David Suzuki of course a famous Canadian environmentalist um, a superhero if you will and uh, we could select colors here or, or around here and pick that and use it on his face here like that and kind of get rid of that little blemish that's there and of course we could add these colors once again same way to our palette down here for that matter if we really wanted to be doing flesh tones a lot we could make a whole palette that is full of flesh tones and we can actually save that palette we can do this with manage color palette that's right here save current palette as give it a name let's say it was a whole skin tone palette we want to call it skin tones press enter and it is saved and we'll notice here that we come here and we have a skin tones palette and that will be the same for all the other palettes that you add to this um, likewise you can also open palettes folder which is pretty pretty much the same as selecting them from here so we can do that and we can also reset to our default palette if we want to get rid of all the colors that we've picked and go back to the one we had at the start there we are we're with it again so that's color picking and picking colors from photos picking colors from our color wheel as well as the sliders down here with the more button and uh, talking about our primary color which is usually the color we're using for drawing onto an image that's all we're going to talk about for today we'll talk about more in part three of this tutorial thank you again for listening and if you guys have any comments questions any of that or suggestions for that matter I would love to hear them. Please leave them in the comments or send me um, a personal comment through the, I don't know, the comment system, email thing, whatever. Messages. Messages is the word I'm looking for. And, uh, you know, let me know a few things that you are looking for. I want to gear these t tutorials towards the people who are watching them and what they need and what they want, um, be it for a specific program such as paint.net like this or for general drawing techniques and so on. So that will help me gauge what I want to do for my next work, I guess. And um, keep watching. There's going to be more tutorials coming in the very near future, I imagine. So check those out. And if you haven't checked out part one of this tutorial yet, please check that out as well, because with each one of these, we're going to be building as we go. Thanks again for watching. Tune in for the next one.